Okay, so this will be the first video uh, where I actually go over some of the code for the NeoVim from Scratch series. Uh, you're going to want to head over to github.com slash lunarvim slash neovim from scratch if you want to follow along. Um, we're going to be going over the options branch, so I have them numbered. You can, you know, feel free to skip ahead if you want to, but we're going to be going over options in this video. I'm also going to be going over um, how to structure your config, just the basic structure to kind of get you started so you can understand uh, like what, what, are, what is the Lua directory, what is in the Lua, and so on and so forth. Uh, to follow along, if you want to follow along directly with the code that you, you know, will see in this video, then you're going to want to clone uh, this repo into your .config envim. You could follow along without doing that, but it's probably easier just to follow along with this. If you already have um, an envim directory in .config, then you're going to want to move it to something like envim.old. Okay, so just make sure you've cloned this and or, you know, you're ready to follow along. And we're going to go into .config envim. Okay. Uh, you'll notice that we're on the master branch, so the first thing we're going to do to just, you know, only get options and only have enough to, like, only see the options so we're not overwhelmed by all the stuff that's there with the final product, we're just going to check out 01 options here, and then you'll just see basically the same stuff here. But you can ignore the license file, and you could ignore the readme.md file. Um, you don't have to pay attention to those at all. Now, in Lua is essentially the entry point for NeoVim. So NeoVim is going to look for this file first and any Lua code that it finds in there, it's going to run on startup. Uh, the Lua directory here is essentially where you're going to keep all of your other .lua files so you can kind of break up your config nicely. So it's essentially like a path where you'll be able to reference other Lua files and find other Lua files. But you'll, you'll see how that works um, if, as, as you follow along with the series. So if we go into Lua, You'll notice I have one more directory in here, and it's just called user. So I just call it user. You can name it after yourself. So I could call this Chris if I wanted to. It's arbitrary. If you, you know, you want to have this be some NeoVim distribution in the future or something like that, you can name it after that. Um, you can name it whatever you want. It's, it's, it, it just has to be something here. And the reason for that is because if you start putting .lua files in here, they may collide with some other .lua files that are named the exact same thing. So one will end up like overriding, overriding the other. So that's why we have this here just as like a namespace. All right, and so we're gonna go inside of user and we actually see our options.lua file. So let's open that up. All right, so basically you can just see all these options here. I'm not gonna go over every single one, but I'm just gonna explain a few and then I'm gonna explain like just kind of what's going on here and kind of where where you can find more options. So with this options file, you can see that I already have given like a bunch of comments, like just basic comments to kind of explain them. Now, uh, they'll be explained in much more detail if you do help. So we're gonna go into command mode here. We're gonna do help options at the bottom. Uh, you also can tab down here. So if I start typing like H and I go through, you know, you can see that there's help right there. Um, actually, what I should do is turn on screen keys. So you can see my keys here. And so we're going to do help and then we'll just do options and then we're just going to tab and you can see that we get options here. All right. So this is a big file full of options and it's essentially like if we go through it, for instance, you can see that we have backup as our first one. We can look up back up and you can see that this option is described in detail right there. Uh, the next one is clipboard, right? And you can see this option is described in detail here. So I'm not gonna go over every single one. Um, I'll leave that up to you if you wanna read over every single one or if these comments are you know, sufficient for you, then that should be fine. But these are the options that I have set. Now, some of them may already be default options in NeoVim, right? Um, Sometimes they change them. Sometimes, uh, you know, it, a, an option will be updated in the future. And sometimes I just forget or I don't know or whatever. And then I just have them set anyway. Um, because even sometimes you'll show up here. And even if it is set and you already have it set to something like, like say smart case was already true, then maybe I want to come in here and set it to false every now and then. So I'll just leave the option open so I can come in here and easily reference it, right? So... All right, so let's, let's, we already talked about um, where you can get more help. Um, also, let's talk a little bit about Lua and like what's happening here anyway. 
So like these are, this is how you comment in Lua. Um, Lua is probably new to a lot of people. So it's like a whole programming language that you kind of have to learn a little, you'll have to learn a little bit uh, to actually set up your config, but you'll notice that it's, it's really expressive and really simple. So two dashes are, is just a comment. Um, you know, you just have basic stuff. The weirdest thing that you'll probably see here is this uh, curly braces kind of thing here, right? It looks like a list of strings. Uh, this is what's known as a table, but we'll, we'll kind of go into tables more in depth later on in the series. But you can just think of it as a list and then also a kind of way to, you can put key value pairs in there too. But for now, we're just going to think of it as a list and that's what this particular option takes. All right, so these are just some options. So like for instance, for mouse, we have A, that's for all. It just allows the mouse to be used in all modes. Um, I don't know what else, right? The split below makes sure, like it makes sure that all of my splits that are horizontal always split below. Same with if I do a vertical split, it forces it to split to the right. And there's a bunch of other ones. Like if you want, um, like if you tab, for instance, and you only want it to tab two spaces, because I think NeoVim does eight by default, and Vim has always done eight by default. Um, I don't know why that's a default, but like I think a more sane option is like, you know, two or four or maybe even three if you're, you know, but it, yeah, I, I would recommend setting it to two or four or something like that. And there's a bunch of other things like you see this line under uh, where I'm moving here. That's the cursor line. You can see the numbers. I have numbers set to true. If we set that equal to false, it wouldn't be there and so on and so forth. Um, the other thing that I'll note is down here at the bottom, you can see that I have this other thing. And for all options, again, it should be obvious, but you just do vim.opt dot whatever the option is. And then you just give it a value, whatever value you find in help options. So let's also talk about um, this vim.cmd down here, which is a little bit different. So vim.cmd, what, what we're able to do with this is we're actually able to run vim script inside of a string. So what we can, like we can pass vim script as a string and then NeoVim will interpret it as actual vim script and we'll run it. So for instance, I have an option here. This is an old kind of way of setting options, right? And so set is keyword and I do plus equals um, uh, like a, a dash right there, right? Now I'm pretty sure I could just append it, right? But I figured I would just leave this stuff down here so you can see um, that you can actually write if you're used to Vim script or something like that and you know how to do something in Vim script but you don't know how to do it in Lua, you can use something like vim.cmd just to pass a string of Vim script that will be interpreted as actual Vim script later on. So for instance, what that thing does is if I do ASDF-ASDF, it'll treat it as one word. So if I do like DW on top of that, it'll delete it. Um, if I didn't have that, then it would have only deleted this first ASDF and left the rest there. So that's what that is keyword thing does if you were if you were interested. Anyway, so that's pretty much all this. So, but let's talk about how I actually know about this options file. Like how how does NeoVim actually find this options file and set all of my options? So we're gonna do just quickly PWD so you can see where we're at at this point. We're in .config nvim lua user, right? So let's go back a um, couple of directories here. All right, and so then again, you can ignore readme and you can ignore license. We know it's in Lua now. Let's take a look at init.lua. So init.lua, the only thing it has in here, and this is, this is you're just gonna see this, this is all I'm ever gonna have in uh, init.lua is just a ton of require statements. And what, what this does is you, you can notice that first of all, I don't have lua.user.options. And I also don't have options.lua, right? What I have in here is I just have require user.options. The Lua is implied and also dot Lua is implied. So you don't have to care about that. Um, I'm just gonna introduce a quick command here and we're in command mode. I'm just gonna do lexplore. That's gonna open up something called netrw over to the side here. So you can kind of go through, um, you know, your files and stuff. And so you can see, okay, here's init.lua, we go into Lua, we go into user, we go into options, and that's where it is, right? So that's that's kind of how you can see that. So we're just gonna close that. So again, we can just do user.options. You don't have to put the Lua, you don't have to put dot Lua. All right, and so that's all you had to do to get it to require your options. Now, notice that if I comment this out really fast and I restart 
any of them. All of my numbers are gone. I don't have the cursor line anymore. If I try to do like ASDF dash ASDF here, and I do DW, now that isn't treated as a full keyword there. So you can see that, you know, kind of what happened. Um, none of my options are set. So we're just gonna put that back to normal, um, like this. Whoops. Okay, we'll save that, reopen it, and all of my options are set again. Yeah, so that's basically just kind of a simple introduction to options. Now, um, I did options as simply as I possibly could in this video. Uh, you'll probably, some people will be like, oh, well, you don't have to, you know, repeat vim.opt over and over and over and over again. Um, what you could do is you could just set vim.opt, um, or you could do o is, whoops, o is equal to vim.opt, right? And then instead of vim.opt all over the place here, you could just put O, right? So for every single one of these things, you could just put O, and that would be the exact same thing, essentially, um, as, as vim.opt all over the place. Now, even, you know, if you want to take that a step further, and because this is Lua, it's not VimScript, I feel like VimScript people, um, they never really treated VimScript as like a real programming language. Like some people obviously did, but most people I feel like didn't. But I feel like Lua is a little bit more... Um, I, I see, I've noticed more people actually like using for loops and like all these other kinds of things. So if you check out the next branch and you go and look at how I'm setting options in the future, and this is gonna be just a little bit more advanced Lua just so um, you can kind of get a feel for, you know, what you're able to do here. And you don't have to set options like this, but this is another way to do it, is instead of setting the options with vim.opt or whatever, I'm actually just putting all of the options in a big table here. Remember I said a table is a list, but also inside of this list, you can put, um, you know, you can put key value pairs. So we have backup equals false, clipboard equals unnamed plus, uh, command hut equals two, so on and so forth, right? And you can even, you know, nest this kind of stuff, right? So we have a list in here. So you really have to start thinking about like a table as, not, as, as you could have just a regular list like this, or you could have like a list of key value pairs or so on and so forth, right? Um, you also notice I put local. Um, if you don't put local, then by default, all of your variables are gonna be global. So you wanna put local, and that way it'll be just scoped to this particular, uh, this particular file here. Uh, then the next thing you'll notice is if you remember vim.op down here, right? So what I'm doing is pairs. Um, this is essentially like pairs is just key values, right? So what I'm saying is for key and value in pairs of options, where we have options up here at the top, right? And all these key values in here. Uh, we say that vim.opt of key, where this is, you know, a particular key, is equal to a value. And then these are all the values on the other side of the key, right? So this is another way to do it. It's just kind of like for looping through all of them. I figured I would introduce this as well, just so you could like see a more advanced way of kind of doing something simple, just so you could like get a better feel of Lua. Um, and to show you that you don't actually have to do it this way either, uh, you could just do it the, you know, the easy, simple way as well. But I figured I would, I would, you know, put this in just so that, uh, I, I would appease people who wanted to learn a little bit more about Lua. All right. And so in the next video, we're actually going to be checking out this branch here, O2 key maps, and we're going to actually go over some key maps and, uh, how to set key maps for different modes, things like normal mode or visual mode, so on and so forth. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. That's basic options in NeoVim and how to set them and just kind of an introduction to uh, your your um, your kind of config layout here and a little a small Lua introduction as well. Um, and you're gonna learn a lot of Lua as you do this. You don't need to know Lua yet. You will learn Lua as you go through this um, this series and you also just go through like learning about how to, how to set up this NeoVim config. You'll, you'll learn a decent amount of Lua just doing that. All right, so I'm just gonna mention really quick, if you wanna support the channel, you can do so over on Patreon, or you can do that with GitHub sponsors over on my GitHub page here. Um, that's really appreciated if you decide to do that. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Stay tuned for the next one where we're gonna be doing key maps and pretty much you know everything else here uh, at some point <laughs> will end up being a video as well. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure to like and subscribe, and that's it.